Hi everyone, it's Mike. I'm back. Hi to everyone who's new to the channel. I know I've been around, but that's because I am busy being a dad. Anyway, for those of you who've been watching my eGPU videos, I've been noticing you've been posting all sorts of different questions, and as much as I would love to go through and answer every single specific question that you have, um, I can't just do that. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to answer all those questions right now in this video. The first question I'm going to ask is the one that nobody asked, but I'm pretty sure you want to have answered. Why would you want to do eGPU in 2020? Well, it's probably obvious you have an older notebook, and in that no older notebook you have an internal GPU that's just really, really weak, and you want to improve it, but you don't have the money. And you're looking at the newer laptops, the newer laptops are really expensive, so do you look at eGPU as the most viable and affordable option? For everyone who's asking about a specific notebook brand or model, the answer is probably no, eGPU is not going to that's because big companies like HP, Dell, Lenovo, Acer, etc. have a list of hardware that their computers will accept. And um, it's just based on a parts list that they've generated. It's totally arbitrary. But unfortunately, it's because of that hardware restriction why eGP won't work. It's actually programmed into the BIOS of your computer. If you happen to have one of those boutique brands like the Clevo or you know another one of the custom built computer brands, those will most likely work with eGPU because their BIOS is based on a desktop computer. So they should be able to accept um, eGPU without issue. I can't confirm this for sure, but most likely it's going to work. Most likely you have one of the big name brand notebooks. And if you do, there is a workaround and it's based off of software that was developed by someone who happened to be doing eGPU as well. Now I can't vouch that this software will work, but if you look at some of my previous videos with eGPU, I did provide a link to this person's software. And I don't even know if it's still available, but if it is, you can try it, you can download it, and you can see if it works for you. And basically the way this software works that this person has developed is that it basically changes in real time the hardware list of the BIOS of your notebook. It doesn't actually permanently affect it. It just kind of loads before everything and basically tells the computer, hey, don't worry about what's being connected. And from what I read, it's, even not, it's not that perfect. There's even some instances in which that software itself doesn't work, which that's the case then you're completely out of luck for the most part. For those of you who have questions about the eGPU itself, uh, one of the questions that I always get uh, is where do you get an eGPU adapter? And I would say to check eBay, that's where I got mine, or you could check a website like AliExpress or any one of those uh, Chinese websites. I'm not too sure about Amazon, so I can tell you. Beyond the eGPU adapter, you need to have an external power supply. Now, when you get the eGPU adapter, sometimes they offer this Dell power supply that you can connect to it, and you don't have to use that. Plus, that power adapter is also limited to, I believe, 150 watts. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. But in any case, it's not powerful for every GPU that you can connect to the eGPU. Adapter. I recommend you get like a cheap 300 400 watt power supply and connect that to your eGPU and that should be sufficient for most of video cards um, that you connect to the eGPU adapter now if you connect a video card to the eGPU adapter and it has a 6 pin or an 8 pin power connector or both you have to make sure that not only is the eGPU itself powered, but the GPU you plug into that adapter is also powered. So all the plugs need to be plugged in. If you do not have that happen, it will not work. And for those of you who may be a little confused, it's not something you might think about, I highly recommend that you look at a video card that does not have any 6-pin or 8-pin adapter, so you don't even have to think about it. 
All you have to do is worry about powering the eGPU adapter. When it comes to choosing a graphics card with the eGPU adapter, I highly recommend that you don't choose anything that's powerful. Don't look to get something like an RTX 2080i to use with the eGPU, because what will happen is that you'll buy it and realize it's not performing well. The eGPU adapter is limited to PCI Express 2.0 at 1x. That doesn't allow enough bandwidth to go in between the graphics card and your computer. Plus you have the overhead of the connection of the mini PCI Express or Express card, whichever you use. So what I personally recommend is that you look at a mid-range graphics card. Probably something that doesn't have any more than four gigabytes of RAM and probably something that has a 128 bit memory bus. And the only reason I specify that is that it's easier just to identify. You know what? You could probably go used if you want to. Like in the video that I had, I had a GTX 580. That's technically a flagship card for a desktop computer. If you put it in eGPU, you know, this day and age, if you get it used, I think it's like 30 bucks. That's really not a big deal. Though, for 30, 40 bucks, you probably can go with a much newer graphics card. So, you could say that going with a newer graphics card that's mid range probably makes more sense. It also means that you will have. Uh, a less likely of a chance that you'll need to use like a 6-pin or an 8-pin power adapter with it. And I, once again, highly recommend that you look for a graphics card that doesn't require 6-pin or 8-pin power. Another thing that I'll just add regarding the graphics card, in terms of which brand you choose, whether it be AMD or NVIDIA, I have no real proof of this, but based on my experience when I got eGPU working, it seems that you should try to match the brand that you buy for a graphics card with the one that's internal in your notebook. So my notebook happened to have NVIDIA. It turned out NVIDIA cards worked with it. Um, when I tried AMD card, it didn't work. It could have been a fluke. I have no clue. I just recommend you stick to those brands. If you happen to have an Intel graphics, that's internal inside your computer, go with NVIDIA. Um, NVIDIA and Intel tend to work together. So um, I'm guessing that if you were to get an NVIDIA card, it will probably be identified because that will be allowed by your computer's hardware within the BIOS. Like I said, don't quote me on that. I'm totally guessing. Another thing I would add is that based on what I've read, it seems that eGPU works better with AMD cards. I know that kind of throws a curveball at everything I just said before this, but if you happen to have one of those boutique notebooks like the Clevo, like I mentioned before, um, you could probably choose whatever graphics card you want with your eGPU. And with that said, I would recommend you stick with AMD. Once you get your eGPU adapter, you've got your power supply, you've got your graphics card, you have everything plugged in. In terms of actually connecting it to your computer, what I recommend is this process. You turn your notebook on first, then you power on your eGPU. Make sure the fan on your graphics card is spinning. That's a good sign that it's actually on. Then you connect your eGPU adapter to your notebook. I would not recommend that you power on your eGPU first, then turn on your notebook. In my experience, it didn't work that way. A matter of fact, the, the notebook didn't want to start. So if you happen to have, especially one of the bigger name notebooks, always start the notebook first, then turn on the eGPU. Some people have found that if you go into your computer's operating system and then connect your eGPU to your computer, it can work. Another way is you get into your operating system, go into sleep mode, then connect your eGPU, then get out of sleep mode. 
and sometimes that works for some people. All right, so now with all this information, I hope you got your eGPU working, or at the very least, you got closer than you did before. If you didn't get it working, I'm sorry. I try to help. I try to answer your questions. Didn't happen. But if you did get it to work, I hope you got the performance that you're looking for. I hope it's improved over what you had before it. It keeps your computer going and it makes the most of this whole project worthwhile. You probably will notice if you got your GP working that the PCI Express 1X bandwidth is a bottleneck and you're going to see a lot of stuttering. My honest recommendation is that if you can afford to save, you should save instead of trying to do eGPU and actually look at getting a newer notebook that actually has Thunderbolt. Uh, through Thunderbolt, you can get a PCI Express 4X connection to an external graphics card. It's actually pretty common now with a lot of production and professional grade notebooks. So that's something you may be interested in looking into. Thank you for watching this video. Welcome back to my channel. I hope to have more content this year and I'll let you know and I'll be very honest, I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but I do plan to produce more. Just make sure you're subscribed, like this video, and stay tuned. Thank you.